Uh, the message today is going to be how to increase your faith. This is a message for everybody, every Christian. If you turn with me to James chapter 1 verse 5, I'm going to show you why. You need to increase your faith, whoever you are. James chapter 1 verse 5, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, and gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it shall be you. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven by the wind and tossed. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. If you're doubting, you're not going to get the answers to your prayers, that's what you So, the solution is to have your faith raised up. And I'm going to give you a few pointers today on how to increase your faith. So, if we start with Psalm 66, verse 18, the first admonition is this, that you stop sinning. Because if you're sinning, your faith will go down. And Psalm 66, 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And if God does not hear your prayer, He's not going to answer it. So, whatever sin there is that you know about that is in you, then it's time to deal with it. If you turn to Isaiah 59, verse 2, it says, But your iniquities are separated you from your God, and your sins are hidden in his face from you, so that he will not hear. So sin separates you from God, and sin stops your prayers being answered. So if you can get rid of sin in your life, then it's going to help you to have a faith raised up so that you can get more answers from God. The next scripture is Micah chapter 3 verse 4. Then they will cry to the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time, because they have been evil in their deeds. This is the message from the scripture. That if you are doing evil, sinning in the sight of God, He's going to hide His face from you and you will not get your prayers answered. So the first step is stop sinning. And you're going to say to me, Well, how do I do that? Because I know that I'm sinning, but I've tried many, many times to go my sin and I can't do it. So I'm going to give you a few pointers to that. The first one, Psalm 119 verse 11, and it says, Your word have I hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Getting the word of God into your heart will give you the ability to stop sinning. It won't mean you stop sinning because you've still got a choice. You can still choose to sin if you want to, you can sin willfully. But at least it will give you the opportunity to make the choice. Getting the word of God in your heart will help you to stop sin. Look at Psalm 40, verse 8. It says, and this is a, a prophecy about Jesus, I delight to do your will, O my God, and your law is within my heart. So Jesus Christ was a man who was full of the word of God. And because of that, he had the ability not to sin. He's the only man who ever lived who never sinned. Everybody else has sinned. But Jesus himself didn't. And this is how he managed to do it. He got the word of God in him. He was fed on the word of God from a child. And he was built up in strong new faith. This is what God has commanded throughout the Bible. I mean, go to Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6. And it says, These words which I command you today shall be in your heart. From the beginning, even when the law was given to people, it was commanded that people get the word into their heart. If you go to Joshua 1.8, it will give you some idea of how to do it. 
This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. The book of the law was not to depart out of your mouth. What does that mean? It means it's always in your mouth. It means you're always speaking the word of God. And Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if the law of God, the word of God, is not in your heart, you're not going to be speaking it out of your mouth. And therefore, you won't get what is told. The reason for that is that you may observe to do according to all that is written. In other words, be obedient. Do what you know it says to do. And if you do this, then you'll make way prosperous. Then you'll have good success. Why? Because God is going to make your way and give you the ability that you need to do the things that you need to do by faith. Job 22, verse 22. And I'm going to read a few verses from this. Because this is another one that he's telling you to get the word in you. Receive, please, instruction from his mouth. That's God's mouth. And lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be built up. You will remove iniquity far from your tents. That's what we're explaining. The way to get rid of sin is to get the word in your heart. Then you will lay your gold in the dust, and the gold will fall for you among the stones of the brooks. Gold is symbolic of faith. So what it's telling you is that if you do what the scripture says, your faith will increase. Yes, the Almighty will be your gold and precious silver. Then you will have your delight in the Almighty and lift up your face to God. You will make your prayer to him and he will hear you. If he hears you, it means he answers. You will also declare, declare a thing and it will be established for you. So light will shine on your ways. You'll declare a thing, you'll make a decree, you'll say something is, and God is a God who calls those things which are not as though they are. He speaks things into existence. This is how he creates everything. John 1, 1 says he created everything by his word. So words are very important. Words are very powerful, especially the word of God, because the word of God created everything that exists. And if you get it into your heart and you speak it out of your mouth, you can start to see the right things coming to pass. And it says in Isaiah 57 verse 19, and it's God speaking, he says, I create the fruit of the lips. In other words, God's telling you, I'm going to create what you speak. So this is what we have to do. We have to learn the way that God operates. And remember, we are created in the image of God. So if God operates and does everything by faith, this is the way that we are going to operate. Word in the heart, speak it out of your mouth, and then see it come to pass. Proverbs 4, verse 20. My son, give attention to my words. That's Jesus' words, God's words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. So it's telling you again to get God's word in your heart. For they are life to those who find them, that spiritual life, and health to all their flesh. So if you get the word of God into your heart, it will give you faith and increase your faith to receive your healing. There's one more scripture, which is Romans 10, verse 17, and I'll just quote it to you. It says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So basically, that's what you need to do. Get the word of God in your heart. Now there are some people who read the scriptures, they read the word of God, and I know from my own experience when I was a young Christian, I used to get certain scriptures and I would read them over and over and over and over. And in the end, I come to the place where I'm thinking, I, I'm just, I can't get to the place where I believe. 
meditating the scriptures is not enough. And I cry out to God and say, how can I believe it unless you let me believe it? So there's got to be a solution to this. And there is. And it's called heart condition. So look at the heart condition. Go to Matthew 13. And we'll look at the parable that Jesus said there. I'm going to read verse 3 to 9. This is Matthew chapter 13, verse 3. He spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, the soul went out to sow. And as he sowed, some, feed, some fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground, and they yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some thirty, sixty, some thirty. Here as he is to hear, and he hear. Now fortunately, the good thing about this parable is Jesus gave us an explanation. So if you go to verse 18, we'll hear how he explained what this parable meant. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. But he who receives seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. And yet in himself he has no root in himself, but he endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, he immediately stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some hundred, some sixty, and some thirty. Now, it's profitable if we read another scripture with this, and it's in Luke chapter 8. And I'm not going to read the parable again, uh, but I'm going to read the explanation because that's something new. so if you look at Luke 8 verse 11 now the parable is this the seed is the word of God those by the wayside are the ones who hear the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts lest they should believe and be saved but the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, who believe for a while, and in time of temptation fall away. And the ones that fell among the thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on good ground, those having heard the word, and with a noble and a good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. So this is the parable. The seed is the word of God. The place where it is sown, we're talking about spiritual sowing now. The place where it is sown is in the heart of the individual. You are sitting there now. You are listening to me speaking. And the words that I'm speaking to you are being sown in your heart. Whether you remember it in a day's time or a week's time depends on the condition. And this particular parable gives you four conditions of heart. The first one was the people who don't believe. They have a hard heart. It was a wayside where the track is trodden soil. No root can go down. It basically just lies there and the devil comes and speaks out of you. They don't remember anything. 
The second one is sown on stony ground. This is like very shallow. They receive the word with joy, and suddenly it springs up. But when the persecution arises, when the trials come, these, these kind of people with this kind of life, they burn out like the sun scorching the planet. They burn out, they fail. They go for a little while, but then they have a problem. And that problem is, it's too much trouble. So they go, they quit. And I want to explain to you why they quit. It's because of the hard condition, but it's to do with the fact that they have no root. In their heart, they have nothing to root. And if you want to know where the root is, keep that page that you're in, but just turn with me to Ephesians chapter 3, and I'll show you what the root refers to. I'm going to read from verse 14. This is a prayer that Paul prayed for the Ephesians. And he says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the width and length and depth of height. If the rooting of the grounding is in, is in love, if you have love in your heart, when the word is sown, it will take root. This is what a good heart refers to. It's a loving heart. I mean, God is, God is love. That's what the Bible says to me. God is love. And so he's an example. And what he is commanding in his word, even in the law of Moses, the greatest commandment was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the second one was to love your neighbor as yourself. It says in um, uh, Romans 13, I think it's around verse 8 or 9, love is the fulfilling of the law. So basically the way to fulfill the law is to become like God, have a heart full of love. And when his seed is sown in that kind of heart, it will make a difference because it will take root. It will have something to hold. Now the person whose heart was stony ground didn't have a love. It's more about self than it's about love. So when they go through a trial, they get to the place where, oh, this is too, I can't, I don't want this, so it's too hard. And because they regard self more than anything else, they'll quit because it's now becoming uncomfortable. So if people come to the church and you recognize they've got stony hearts, don't put no trial on it. Wait and try to work on that heart and get it to be built up first. Get some operating love. If you want to know how to tell what love is, all you've got to do is look at Jesus. And you can ask yourself, do I have this love? Jesus was a giver. He gave healing to the sick. He gave sight to the blind. He gave deliverance to the captives. He gave cleansing to the lepers. And he hung on a cross. And he died and he gave forgiveness of sins to us. He was all about not self, but love for other people. What's best for others, not what's best for self. So the spirit of God that was in him is a giving spirit. Look what he's given to us. He gives us salvation. Nobody in here deserves that, not even me. But God is a giver. And this is what he does. And if you have that spirit of God in you, you will be a giver. And if you're not a giver, I suggest you get into it. Do something else with you. Let's go back to Luke chapter 8. We looked at the one on the rock. The next one is the one on thorns. And this adds something which the scripture in Matthew did down. And it's uh, the riches and pleasures of this life. Now Matthew didn't talk about the pleasures of this life. But when you rightly divide the word and you put these things together, you're going to find out what they are. 
Because then you can put all the scriptures together and bring them. The cross of Jesus Christ is deny self. The word of Satan is please yourself. Do what you want to do. Yeah? Satan is all about self coming first. Jesus is all about self coming last. It's deny self. Do what's best for other people. And if you're not into that, I'd encourage you to think about it and get into it. Because if you don't take up your cross and follow Christ, in Matthew 10, verse 38, he said, You're not working on you. Which means you will be lost. Click here to subscribe to Logos Apostolic Bible College. Check out the other YouTube videos that we have. Go also and check out the great Bible studies. Hebrew word studies, Greek word studies, and lots more on our website. And God bless you.